All right, I get it. You want to learn SQL, but you want to learn it fast. You don't have time to waste taking all these different courses and going in the wrong direction. So today I'm going to tell you the fastest way that I would learn SQL if I had to relearn starting right now. I'm Jess Ramos and this is my cat. And I'm a senior data analyst in tech and the founder of Big Data Energy. I make content here on YouTube, on Instagram, LinkedIn, and in my newsletter all about data analytics and SQL. Don't forget to subscribe for more and check out my SQL course below. So first of all, what's SQL? SQL stands for Structured Query Language or SQL. A lot of people call it SQL, but most people call it SQL and I call it SQL. So call it what you want. SQL is a coding language that we can use to talk to the database and communicate with the database in order to pull the data that we need to perform further data analysis. Not only can we pull the data, but we can also clean it, deal with missing values and issues with our data. We can transform it and create new things from the data, and we can kind of reshape our data to get it in the right format and get it to look how we want it to look for our analysis. Not only is SQL great all on its own because we can actually create metrics and KPIs or key performance indicators right in SQL and track things in SQL, we can also take these result sets and bring them into other tools. So pairing SQL with other tools makes it even more powerful. A really common thing that SQL is paired with is a BI tool or a business intelligence tool like Power BI or Tableau. We can actually use SQL in the back end to pool and wrangle and prepare our data. And then on the front end, that's where we can actually visualize our data, create charts and create dashboards, the things that people see on the front end. And with the right packages, we can even write SQL inside of Python scripts as well. So as you can see, SQL is honestly the backbone of data analytics and it supports so many other tools and opens so many other doors for data analytics. And because it's so versatile and widely used, it's on almost every single job description for almost every type of data role out there, no matter the seniority level. So it's absolutely worth learning well if you wanna get a job in data and it's worth learning on an even deeper level if you wanna stay in data and move up in the ranks. All right, I've already told you what SQL is and a little bit about how data analysts use SQL, but how do you get started? So let's say you've never coded before. You've never written a single line of code in your entire life. Don't worry, I promise SQL is one of the most friendliest coding languages to get started. But if you have coded before, you're probably gonna find SQL a little bit easy to pick up because it kind of sounds like natural language. It kind of makes a little more sense intuitively compared to like Python or you know a different programming language. The first thing I would do to learn SQL is to take a beginner course. There are so many courses out there and it's really easy to get distracted by all the shiny objects and then you end up with a whole list of courses that you've started and never finished. Sorry, not trying to call anyone out, but we all know that happens to all of us. My biggest advice is to just pick a beginner SQL course because at the end of the day, beginner SQL is beginner SQL and you can't really go too wrong here. And there's honestly so many free beginner SQL resources out there. You can't really go wrong with it. Just like look it up online, look on YouTube. There's so many free resources out there. You can't really go wrong with beginner SQL because again, you're just learning the basics here just to kind of get started and get a little comfortable coding. I actually do have my own free beginner SQL course, Big SQL Energy Beginner. I'll put the link below. It's 31 lessons of beginner SQL and you'll start out as a complete newbie, literally starting at step one of SQL and you'll work yourself all the way up to the bottom of the intermediate level by the end of the course. It only takes like five hours, 31 quick lessons, written and video content. Boom, boom, boom. If you wanna learn beginner SQL fast, just grab my free link below. But if you're looking for another beginner course out there and you wanna find something that's worthwhile, I highly recommend that you find something that teaches you select from, where, group by, having, aggregate functions, aggregate functions with group by, date manipulation, string manipulation, Boolean operators, in, between, wild cards, arithmetic operators, is null, null handling, coalesce, case, inner joins, order by, limit, counting, count star versus count column, data models, data dictionaries, primary keys versus foreign keys, and maybe even a few case studies to practice your skills. Again, my free beginner course link will be below, but if you're looking for a different beginner course, those are all of the topics that I would consider to be beginner level and actually worth your while learning. 
But don't just take the course and stop there and say, great, I finished the course. I got my certificate. I know beginner SQL. I'm good to go. You have to actually practice. That means go outside of the course, find brand new data sets you've never worked with and practice those skills you learned. That's how you're really going to solidify your skills. That's how you're really going to stretch your knowledge. Just get comfortable with being uncomfortable because being uncomfortable, not knowing how to do something, struggling, Googling, working through it, that is what's going to make you a good data analyst. So after you learn beginner skills, go find data sets and practice on your own. You can find data sets on resources like Kaggle or government institutions. There are so many free data sets online, like literally Google data sets that are related to your industry or your business domain, whatever type of data analyst job you want to go for, Google those types of data sets. And I promise you're going to find so many options. And to learn all of these skills and practice them, it would probably only take you between one to three weeks, depending on how much time you had. My beginner course only takes about five hours, but if you keep pausing and coding and practice on your own, it would probably take around a couple of weeks or so to finish. And then by the time you finish the beginner sequel, you've practiced, you've built up some confidence, then you're ready for dun 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 intermediate sequel. And the next step is intermediate SQL. And this is where I would say, like, don't just go find any random course online because you want to make sure you're spending your time on something worthwhile here. A lot of intermediate courses are just pretty like high level, basic. You're using a fluffy sample data set, not really solving business problems, just learning the skills very simply in isolation, which is fine. It's a great way to learn the skills. But if you're getting to the intermediate level and you want to really shine here and stand out in the job market, you have to actually apply those intermediate skills. So instead of finding a really fluffy surface level course that just teaches you the bare basics of every concept, you need to find a course that's actually going to help you apply those skills to solve real world business problems. And the skills you're going to need to learn here are joins, case, set operations, CTEs, subqueries, window functions, views and temp tables, optimization, and self-joins. Honestly, those are kind of hard to learn, so they deserve a separate mention outside of all joins. But anyways, I teach you all of these skills in a real-world business case study environment in my intermediate course, Big SQL Energy. I'll put the link to that below. And at the very end, I guide you through two entire projects from beginning to end that you can put in your data analytics portfolio, which we're about to talk about. Now that you've learned beginner and intermediate SQL, you're ready to put your skills to the test by building your own projects. Why do you need to do your own projects? Number one, they're really good for growth because once you get thrown into a project and you're having to do things on your own outside of a regular course environment, you're going to be challenged. You're going to be lost. You're going to get stuck and you're going to have to work through it. It's that critical thinking work through it skill that you need to develop to be a really good data analyst. Number two, you need to build your own projects because that's going to be your real world experience that you put in a portfolio, which is what you're going to show a hiring manager. You can do this by finding guided projects online. Sometimes courses come with projects like my intermediate one, or honestly, you can also just go find your own data sets and create your own projects. Create a fake business problem or business scenario and ask a bunch of questions about the data. For example, are there any trends between X and Y? What is the biggest X in the data set? What's the average of Y in the data set? And just be sure that all the questions you're answering point back to some sort of business problem or business scenario and bonus points if you also include business recommendations at the end. And there's no certain amount of projects you should have. So I'm not going to sit here and say you need exactly five SQL projects or you need one million SQL projects. It does not matter how many projects you have, definitely do as many as you need to, to build confidence and learn and practice. And then you're going to take your top few best ones and put those on your resume and in your data analytics portfolio. So now that you've learned and practiced SQL and you've proven your skills through projects, now you have to showcase them in a data analytics portfolio. You can host that in GitHub, write out your readme page, and that's going to be what you share with hiring managers to actually show them and prove to them that you can do the job. I actually walk you through building a data analytics portfolio in my intermediate course as well. But if I had to start over learning SQL today, that is the exact process that I would do it. I would learn beginner SQL, practice those beginner skills, jump into intermediate SQL in a trusted course that's actually going to teach you how to apply those skills. Then I would build my own projects and put them in a portfolio. 
And you might be wondering, Jess, how much time does this take? And my answer would be, well, how much time do you have? I think if someone's really ambitious, it could take maybe four to six weeks to get through that entire process. But the reality is that not everybody has time every single day to be learning and practicing SQL. And that's okay too. So it might take you eight to 10 weeks or 10 to 12 weeks, and that's fine as well. But the important part is that you're actually taking the time to learn SQL well, build out projects and build your portfolio, because those things are what's gonna matter in the long run the most. I'm Jess Ramos, thanks so much for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more, bye.